It has been 17 days now since anyone last saw 25 year old Doris Maricela Aguilar. She went missing the night of July 1st. Her car was found abandoned seven days later near I 17 and Bethany Home Road. And now her family is fearing the worst. Fox 10's Ashley Rodriguez is live tonight with the clues they're trying to piece together in all this. Ashley. Yeah, her car was found in a mall parking lot. It was unlocked, and inside was her purse and her wallet full of cash. But what really has her family scared is she says they say that she had a stalker that not only followed her for months, but harassed her as well. Family and friends of 25 year old Doris Maricela Aguilar consider her a gym rat, a health nut, and a hard worker. In fact, the day before she went missing on July 1st, she had meal prepped. With no history of mental health issues, drug abuse, or disappearing for periods of time, her family immediately notified police their daughter never came home after work that Monday night. There was this man that could follow her to the to the to different genes. Her family says Doris had a stalker. The man was her co-worker and began sending her harassing messages. When she reported him, the company fired him, but he kept appearing, sending her messages from an account with a gun as the profile picture. The only photo on the account was of an AR-15 in the back of a car. She was very scared of him, and she expressed that. Desperate, her family hired licensed missing persons private investigator Steve Fisher to help find her. He tells me the stalker would show up in the parking lot of the gym she attended, forcing her to switch gyms three times. In one post on June 27th, he writes, getting my membership back. See you soon. Days later, Doris was gone. So they are scared to death. I can see the fear. Uh, in their faces. I reached out to Phoenix police who told me they processed her vehicle and are awaiting results while detectives continue to follow all leads. So I believe that that guy took her. So I really hope that she's still here in Arizona. They didn't took her anywhere, anywhere else. So Fisher says that right now he's following up, asking the store that her car was parked in front of for surveillance video. He also said that he's following up on a lead. He says that her cell phone recently pinged in Houston. He's trying to get those police out there to check on where the ping came from. If you know anything about the whereabouts of Doris, please call Phoenix Police. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Tragic news today for the family of Doris Aguilar. They've been looking for her since she went missing on July 1st. And today, Phoenix police confirmed not only did they identify her body, but the man who they say killed her. Fox 10's Ashley Rodriguez is here to explain what happened. Ashley. So Doris's disappearance is actually tied to another case. On July 8th, you may remember we told you the bodies of two people were found in a car near 75th Avenue and Encanto Boulevard in a parking lot outside of Longhorn State. Steakhouse. So police confirmed today those bodies were Doris and a 51 year old man named Juan Jose Velas Cuellar. And to give you a little background on Doris, this week we learned her family says she had a stalker, a co worker who began sending her harassing messages. When she reported him, the company fired him, but he kept appearing and sending her messages from an account with a gun as a profile picture. And the only photo on the account was of an AR-15 in the back of a car. She was very scared of him, and she expressed that. They say the stalker would show up in the parking lot of the gym she attended, forcing her to switch gyms three times. In one of his posts on June 27th, he wrote, getting my membership back, see you soon. Then suddenly she went missing three days later. And that's why her family hired a private investigator who I spoke with today. There was a note left, which can't get into too many details, but he did try to make it sound like she did this to herself. But it's very clear from where the gunshot wound entry is and the details in the car that that's not the case. Um, that he, he was, you know, she's a homicide victim and he then took his own life afterwards. Just the news, the finality of it, you know, they're devastated. And when the two bodies were found in the car on July 8th, police say they had been dead for several days. It's not clear how she was abducted or where he took her, but it appears he killed her before putting her body in the car and then killing himself. And as you know, this is the worst news a family can hear after holding out hope for three weeks their daughter would come home. Ellen. Yeah. Ashley, thank you. It's just, you just feel for their yeah. family.
All right, we are learning more tonight about the police situation that happened today in Tempe this afternoon, uh, where a home caught fire while police were trying to make an arrest. The U.S. Marshals East Valley Task Force reporting that an officer involved shooting left one person dead. No officers were injured. Fox 10's Nicole Christine joining us now with more details and neighbor reaction. Yeah, good evening, Mark and Christina. The scene here has quieted down quite a bit. We were actually able to move a lot closer to the residence where this all took place as they set up a new police cutoff zone. And again, that's a lot closer, so action dying down here. But a few hours ago, as you said, just an active scene, multiple agencies trying to handle not only an officer-involved shooting, but then that fire that erupted at the home just down the street. The moments when a Tempe neighborhood turned into the scene of an officer involved shooting Thursday caught on ring camera. U.S. Marshals on scene to arrest a person wanted by Chandler Police Department on multiple counts, then exchanging gunfire. The house on East Del Rio Drive, then going up in flames. Been very tumultuous and hectic and scary. Pat Cater has lived in this neighborhood for 46 years and said this type of situation is very unusual for the area. Cater said she stayed in her home after hearing shots were fired down the block. We were on notice that that's why all these police cars were pitching up in our neighborhood and then SWAT teams came and crime tape went up and so we knew something serious was going on. The flames added even more concern for nearby residents. You know, I you just worry for the neighborhood. <laughs> Fires, you know, lump, jump and leap. And as for the person or people who lived in the home, I don't know the people who live in that house. I don't know about that. I would drive by it, but I, I know nothing about who lives there and who was there or anything else. You know, it's just really scary. Yeah, definitely a scary scene here earlier today. Now, that unnamed fugitive was wanted on warrants of burglary, trafficking in stolen property, and felony flight. They also had a violation of a um, probation, active probation violation out of Maricopa County. Now, the East Valley Critical Incident Response Team is going to be investigating this. And I did want to add that we met so many nice people today on this block that were confused and concerned. And Tempe PD has said that this will be the scene of a large police presence for a few days, but that there is no threat to the community. So hopefully these folks in this neighborhood can relax a little bit, knowing that there is no active threat. Reporting in Tempe, Nicole Christine, Fox 10 News. Philip Brady got the call after work. He stayed on the phone with the scammer for about an hour and recorded the entire conversation. This is Deputy Mike Caputo. And where's Maricopa your batch County number? Sheriff's Office. Nine, the single digit, number nine, sir. On July 5th, Philip Brady got an incoming call from who he thought was the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, as that's how it showed up on his phone. He started throwing all these legal things at me, saying, while well, you didn't show up to court to jury duty, and you need to turn yourself in to the sheriff's department. Or if you want to get out of this, you need to go to the bonds and, and, and or go to your bank and get this, which was 90,000, they want it. A total of a $90,000 US bond. These are not criminal bonds, ma'am. These are simple cash collateral surety bonds for the courts. The scammer even sent over fake documents along with how Brady needed to transfer the money. Officers to reach out to the clerk's office. What they're going to be doing at that time, sir, is sending over a digital copy of your warrant. It's going to be in black and white. When Brady said he didn't have $90,000, the caller eventually lowered it to $1,000. He told me, go to the bank and go get money out. And then when you're, gonna, when you're done with that, you're going to go to a kiosk. The closest kiosk, and he knew where the kiosk was. It was Fry's. The details are what made Brady question if this was real. Yeah, at this time, if you can't if you can't satisfy at least one of those warrants, then you can't state an amount that's available for you to post toward that citation. Just come on, uh, proceed down here to the sheriff's office immediately. Brady pulled out the one thousand dollars the caller was asking, but before he got to a kiosk, his daughter called MCSO, who said to hang up because it was a scam. He almost had me that much, but. This thing started clicking all together, and then that was it. I was like, no, this is a scam. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office says if you get one of these phone calls, the best thing to do is hang up and call local law enforcement immediately to report it. Lindsay Rakes, Fox 10 News.
Dozens of arrests made after police took down a human trafficking operation in Scottsdale. And multiple agencies took part in that two-day investigation. 42 people were arrested between July 12th and the 13th. And of those arrests, police say there were 11 felonies and 31 misdemeanor charges, including child sex trafficking, pandering, prostitution, and drug possession. They say the goal was to target sex buyers, child predators, and those involved with the sex trade and trafficking industry. It's one of those things that I don't think will ever stop, but I think us being able to put our, ourselves out there, make sure the community knows what we're doing, will slow down um, and maybe push this to a different area. Scottsdale PD's Human Exploitation and Trafficking Unit led that operation. They were assisted by police departments in Avondale, Goodyear, and Surprise.